The Tamaror or Mandoro dwarf buffalo Bubalus mindarensis is a small hoofed mammal belonging to the family Bovidae. It is endemic to the island of Mandoro in the Philippines and is the only endemic Philippine bovine. It is believed, however, to have once also thrived on the larger island of Luzon. The Tamaror was originally found all over Mandoro, from sea level up to the mountains 2,000 meters above sea level, but because of human habitation, hunting, and logging, it is now restricted to only a few remote grassy plains and is now a critically endangered species. Contrary to common belief and past classification, the Tamaror is not a subspecies of the water buffalo, nor is it a subspecies of the slightly larger carabao, which is classified as a subspecies of the water buffalo. In contrast to the carabao, the tamaraw has a number of distinguishing characteristics, it is slightly hairier, has light markings on its face, is not gregarious, and has shorter horns that are somewhat V-shaped. It is the second largest native terrestrial mammal in the country next only to the carabao. The presence of B. mindarensis on the island of Mandoro, coupled with the discovery of fossil bubalids in other islands around the archipelago, indicates that the family was once widespread throughout the Philippines. In fact, fossil finds in the 20th century have shown that B. mindarensis was once found on the northern Philippine island of Luzon during the Pleistocene. As a member of the family Bovidae, the Tamaror's close affinity to the water buffalo B. bubalis has been validated many times in the past. It was once considered a subspecies of B. bubalis as Anoa bubalis. Anoa bubalis mindarensis. Recent genetic analysis studies of the family members further strengthen this view. Etymology and taxonomic history The Tamaror was originally described as Anoa mindarensis by French zoologist Pierre Marie Hude in 1888. In 1958, it was described as Anoa bubalis mindarensis, a subspecies of the then water buffalo species Anoa bubalis. A little over a decade after, the Tamaror was elevated to species status as Anoa mindarensis in 1969. Later research and analyses of relationships determined the genus Anoa to be a part of the genus Bubalis. The Tamaror's scientific name was updated into its present form, Bubalis mindarensis, sometimes referred to as Bubalis Bubalis mindarensis. The name Tamaror has other variants, such as Tamaro, Tamaru, and Tamarau. The term Tamaror may have come from Tamador, which is a probable alternative name for the Bantank Bos Javanicus. Anatomy and morphology B. mindarensis has the appearance of a typical member of its family. It has a compact, heavy set, bovine body, four legs that end in cloven hooves, and a small, horned head at the end of a short neck. It is smaller and stockier compared to the water buffalo B. bubalis. Little sexual dimorphism is seen in the species, although males are reported to have thicker necks. The tamaraw has a typical shoulder height of 100 to 105 cm 39 minus 41 inches. The length of the body is 2.2 meters 7.2 feet while the tail adds a further 60 centimeters 24 inches. Reported weights have ranged from 180 to 300 kilograms 400 to 660 pounds. Adults have a dark brown to grayish color and more hair than B. bubalis. The limbs are short and stocky. White markings are seen in the hooves and the inner lower four legs. These markings are similar to those of the Anoa B. depressor cornus. The face is the same color as the body. Most of the members of the species also have a pair of gray white strips that begins from the inner corner of the eye to the horns. The nose and lips have black skin. The ears are 13.5 cm long from notch to tip with white markings on the insides. Both sexes grow short, black horns in a V-shaped manner compared to C-shaped horns of B. bubalis. The horns have flat surfaces and are triangular at their base. Due to the regular rubbing, the tamaraw's horns have a worn outer surface, but with rough inner sides. The horns are reported to be 35.5 to 51.0 cm 14.0 to 20.1 inches long. The tamaraw was first documented in 1888 on the island of Mandoro. Before 1900, most people avoided settling on Mandoro due to a virulent strain of malaria. However, as anti-malarial medicine was developed, more people settled on the island. The increase in human activity has drastically reduced tamaraw population. By 1966, the Tamaraw's range was reduced to three areas, Mount Iglet, Mount Calavite, and areas near the Sablayan Penal Settlement. By 2000, their range was further reduced to only two areas, the Mount Siglet Baco National Park and Aruyan. 
Initial estimates of the B. mindarensis population on Mandoro was placed at around 10,000 individuals in the early 1900s. Less than 50 years later in 1949, the population had dwindled to around 1,000 individuals. By 1953, fewer than 250 animals were estimated to be alive. These population estimates continually grew smaller until the International Union for Conservation of Nature publication of their 1969 Red Data book, where the Tamaral population was noted to be an alarmingly low 100 head. This head count rose to 120 animals in 1975. Current estimates place the wild Tamaral population from 30 to 200 individuals. As a rare, endemic mammal on a relatively secluded island, the ecology of the tamaraw is largely unknown. Individuals of the species are reclusive and shy away from humans. In addition, the small sizes of the species' subpopulations, already spread thin throughout their fragmented range on 1986, about 51 individuals are found in a 20km2 area, make contact with any more than a solitary individual a rarity. Habitat B. mindarensis prefers tropical highland forested areas. It is typically found in thick brush, near open canopy glades, where it may feed on grasses. Since human habitation and subsequent forest fragmentation of their home island of Mandoro, the habitat preferences of the Tamaraw have somewhat expanded to lower altitude grassy plains. Within their mountainous environment, Tamaraws will usually be found not far from sources of water. Trophic ecology The tamaraw is a grazer that feeds on grasses and young bamboo shoots, although it is known to prefer coggan grass and wild sugarcane saccharum spontaneum. They are naturally diurnal, feeding during the daytime hours, however, daytime human activities have recently forced select B. mindarensis individuals to be nocturnal to avoid human contact. Life history The tamaraw is known to live for about 20 years, with an estimated lifespan of about 25. The adult female tamaraw gives birth to one offspring after a gestation period around 300 days. There is an interbirth interval of two years, although one female has been sighted with three juveniles. The calf stays for two to four years with its mother before becoming independent. Unlike the closely related water buffalo, B. mindarensis is a solitary creature. Adults of the species do not occur in herds or smaller packs, and are often encountered alone. Only juveniles exhibit the typical bovine herding behavior and clan hierarchy often seen in water buffalo. Males and females are known to associate all year round, but this interaction lasts only a few hours. This solitary behavior may be an adaptation to its forest environment. Adult males are often solitary and apparently aggressive, while adult females can be alone, accompanied by a bull, or the young of different ages. Similar to other bovines the tamaraw wallows in mud pits, maybe to avoid biting insects. Reports of aggression when cornered are unsubstantiated. Tamaraw threat posture involves lowering the head, and shifting its horns into a vertical position, accompanied by head shaking. Being an entirely endemic and rare land mammal, B. mindarensis stands as an extremely vulnerable species. Currently, it is classified as a critically endangered species and has been so since 2000 by the IUCN on its IUCN Red List of Endangered Species. Awareness of the conservation status of B. mindarensis began in 1965, when it was classified as status inadequately known by the IUCN. Enough data were gathered on the Tamaraw population by 1986, and the IUCN Conservation Monitoring Center declared the species endangered. Throughout succeeding surveys conducted in 1988, 1990, 1994 and 1996, the species remained listed on the red list as endangered. The relisting of the species in 1996 fulfilled the IUCN criteria B1 plus 2C and D1. Criterion B1 indicated that the species range was less than 500 square kilometers, and is known to exist in less than five independent locations. A noticed continuing decline in the population fulfilled sub-criterion 2C, given the condition of the population's sole habitat. Criterion D1 essentially required that a population be composed of less than 250 mature individuals. Individual counts of the B. mindarensis population at the time figured significantly lower than this. In 2000, the Tamaraw was relisted on the red list under the more severe C1 criteria. This was due to estimates that the population would decline by 20% in five years or within the time span of two generations. Many factors have contributed to the decline of the Tamaraw population.
Over the course of the century, the increase of the human population on Mandoro has exposed the island's sole Tamaror population to severe anthropogenic pressures. In the 1930s, the introduction of non-native cattle on the island caused a severe rindips epidemic among the Tamaror population then numbering in the thousands. Hunting of Tamarors for food and sustenance has also taken a toll on the species' numbers. The most major factor threatening survival of B. mindarensis is habitat loss due to infrastructure development, logging, and agriculture. These factors reduced the population of thousands during the early 1900s to less than 300 individuals in 2007. Due to the decline of the B. mindarensis population, various Philippine laws and organizations have been created towards the conservation of the species. In 1936, Commonwealth Act No. 73 was enacted by the then Philippine Commonwealth. The act specifically prohibited killing, hunting, and even merely wounding Tamarors, with an exception noted for self-defense if one were to be attacked by an agitated individual or for scientific purposes. The penalties were harsh enough to include a hefty fine and imprisonment. In 1979, an executive order was signed creating a committee specifically geared towards the conservation of the Tamaror, it was referred to as a source of national pride in the said order. The Tamaror Conservation Project was also established in 1979. The organization has successfully bred a Tamaror, nicknamed Kali, in captivity in 1999. In 2001, Republic Act 9147, or the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act was enacted to protect the Tamaror and other endemic species from hunting and sale. During the 1970s, a gene pool was established to preserve the Tamaror's numbers. However, the project was not successful, as only one offspring, named, Kali, was produced. As of 2011, Kali is the only surviving animal in the gene pooling project. The project was also not improved as the Protected Areas and Wildlife Bureau showed that the Tamarors were already breeding in the wild. Cloning was not implemented for conservation as the Department of Environment and Natural Resource argued that such measures would diminish the genetic diversity of the species. A small subpopulation of Tamarors has been found within the confines of the Mount Iglet Game Refuge and Bird Sanctuary on Mandoro. As of May 2007, B. mindarensis is on Appendix I of the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, where it has been economical and commercial value while not as heavily exploited as other large, endangered mammals, the Tamaral population was subject to some harvesting pressure from subsistence hunters before conservation efforts were spurred towards the latter half of the 20th century. The IUCN has described this as still going on in their 2006 Red List report. Though the national animal of the Philippines is the carabao, the Tamaral is also considered a national symbol of the Philippines. An image of the animal is found on the 1980 to early 1990 version of the 1 peso coins. In 2004, Proclamation No. 692 was enacted to make October 1 a special working holiday in the province of Occidental Mindoro. In line with the Tamaral Conservation Month, the proclamation aimed to remind the people of Mindoro the importance of the conservation of the Tamaral and its environment. During the wake of the Asian utility popularity in the 1990s, Toyota Motors Philippines released the Toyota Kajang as the Tamaror FX, an evolution of the Tamaror AUV. It was widely patronized by taxi operators, and was immediately turned into a staple mode of transportation much like a cross of the taxi and the jeepney. The FX later saw a new generation model known locally as the Revo the Tamaror is also the mascot of the varsity teams of the Far Eastern University FEU Tamarors in the University Athletic Association of the Philippines and of the Toyota Tamarors of the Philippine Basketball Association. The Tamaror Falls in Barangay Villaflor, Puerto Galera, were also named after the bovine.